right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Chica Chica Learning. And in this video, we're going to do an example problem solving a statically indeterminate beam using the method of singularity functions or Macaulay's method. It's up to you what you want to call it, but they just involve discontinuity function. We'll have a beam that looks like this. It's got a roller support at A, a pin support at B, and a roller support at C. We've got a uniformly distributed load on this span AB, and the length of the beams, 15 meters and 20 meters. And what we'd like to do is find the support reactions. And what's cool about the method of singularity functions, not only are we gonna get the support reactions, but we're gonna have equations for the slope and deflection for every point of this beam. So basically, with this method, we're gonna be able to get all in one. All right, so before we get going, just wanna share that I make these videos because I really believe anyone can be an engineer with lots of effort and a little bit of coaching. If you haven't already, take a minute, subscribe, like, and share this video. Don't be homeless. Be a homie. Subscribe. So this process follows a really common approach like you would do in statics. And you would draw a free body diagram, draw in the support reactions. And the next thing we would do, just like any other problem, is write the equilibrium equations. And if I take some of the forces in the horizontal, I would get that Bx is zero. Take some of the forces in the vertical. I could take moments about any point that I want. So if I take some of the moments about point B, negative Ay times 15 meters plus 60 kilonewtons times 7.5 meters plus Cy times 20 meters equal to zero. I have two equations and one, two, three unknowns, which tells me that I have one degree of indeterminacy. So I need an extra equation to solve for all my unknowns. And so where am I going to get this extra equation? So if we're using like the force method, we would get it from a compatibility equation. So for in our method of singularity function, we're just going to start with the loading function. And if you're not familiar with the singularity function, I, I recommend that you watch this video that's in the upper right hand corner all right and that'll give you a sense of how we describe the loading with singularity functions thing we want to do now is describe the loading that's acting on the beam including the support reactions using our singularity function so we're gonna have one equation for everything that's happening to the beam here one of the things that we need is an origin because location is important for this equation and so I'm gonna choose my origin at a and I'll be going left to right this I'll call it y or the V for vertical deflection for the displacement field. As I write function, I'll show you what the loading is that we're introducing to the beam on the bottom. So this loading function, we're going to start with a concentrated force, Ay, which is pointing upward. So this is Ay x minus, well, it's placed at x equals zero. So this is x minus zero to the negative one. And that right there, this represents a concentrated force, Ay at x equals zero. Now I have a uniformly distributed load pointing down. So that's going to be negative 4 kilonewtons per meter. The negative is because the load is pointing down. X minus 0 because I turn on or I start the uniformly distributed load at X equals 0 to the 0. And that 0 power indicates that it's constant. Or, and this function right here, underlined in orange, what it really is, is a, a uniformly distributed load that goes all the way across on the beam like this. Because once you turn it on, cannot turn it off. It's like a lot of things in life. What I need is for span BC to be zero. So I need an offsetting uniformly distributed load. I need a uniformly distributed load of four kilonewtons per meter like this in order to reflect what's actually happening. What I'm going to add mathematically is I'm going to add a positive four kilonewtons per meter X minus. Now this starts, this per pinkish load at the bottom here starts at X equals 15 meters. So X minus 15 meters to the zero power. And that's going to give me the zero loading on the span BC. And then I have the concentrated load BY, so plus BY, X minus 15 meters to the negative one, and that's gonna give me the BY. And then I could add the CY plus, I'll put it down here, plus CY times X minus 35 meters to the negative one. But I'll tell you right now, this term will never come into play. It, it will always be zero for any value of X. This last term is technically not needed. So we have our loading function. 
function. So the next thing that we're going to do is take this loading function and integrate it. And the thing you have to remember are some of the, the basic integration rules for singularity functions. And so cap those real fast. And it's just a t standard, the n plus 1, 1 divided by n plus 1, as long as n is an integer that's greater than or equal to 0. If n is less than 0 or negative, then x minus a to the n plus 1. When n is negative 1 or negative 2, those are the only two integration rules you probably need to remember to do this. So here, I know at least from my loading function, the relationship that I know that is that the fourth derivative of the displacement is equal to the loading function. And so if I take one antiderivative or integral away, which is the same thing as the shear function, and so one antiderivative of this would be and for the shear function, we don't include a, a constant of the integration because we've already accounted for the boundaries with the support reaction. Same thing with the moment. So here now, if I take another antiderivative, this is a moment function here, and this will be, and there is my moment function. All right, now I take another antiderivative, and this will give me the slope function dv dx. And this is where we would need a, the constants of integration would appear. Next one right here, we write EIV. This would be the displacement function. It's just, you know, it's just very tedious, right? These are all the functions. The next thing I want to do is identify my boundary conditions. We're going to use the boundary conditions to solve for these unknown constants of integration, plus get our extra equation to solve for the support reactions. And so when I go back and I look at my structure here, you know, wherever I have support reactions is essentially where I have a boundary condition. And so if I look at point A, I have a vertical support reaction. And basically what we're saying is this is our model of saying that point A cannot move up or down. And so that means Means this boundary at A would be like V of zero equals zero. Point B cannot move up or down. And so we would say V, the vertical displacement at 15 meters is equal to zero. And then at point C, point C can't move up or down. So we would say the vertical displacement at 35 meters equals zero. Those are my three boundary conditions. And so I'm going to use them each to solve for my unknowns. I will apply the first boundary condition and I'll say that EI times V of of zero equals zero. And I'm just going to plug and chug into this equation here. The first term is zero minus zero plus, well, it's going to be zero minus 15 in this term right here. It's going to be zero minus 15. So it's negative. So that, that means that singularity function should come out to zero, right? Whenever the value inside the brackets is negative, I have a zero plus zero plus C1 times zero plus C2 equals zero. A, and that tells me C2 equals zero. All right. I wish they were all that nice. <laughs> all right. Then I'm going to apply my next boundary condition here. I'll say EI times V at 15 meters should equal zero. And I'm plugging in 15 meters this time to this equation. And I'll write it in orange plus C1 times 15 meters plus C2 equals zero. I know that C2 is zero. I can solve for C1. So now I have an equation for C1 in terms of A, Y, and then I'm going to apply my last boundary condition. Plug and chug again here equals zero, but we know that C2 is zero. We also know that C1 is right here. That is C1, and we're just going to plug that in there. And what that's going to do is, is going to give me my third equation to solve for my unknown support reaction. If I substitute that C1, it'll look like this. And this last boundary condition with V of 35 equal to zero and with C1 substituted in is going to give me that equation that I really need. Do some algebraic manipulation. It's not difficult. It's just tedious. This is my third equation. Boom, right here. Now I'm going to use this equation with my equilibrium equations and solve for my unknown reaction. So I'll bring my equilibrium equations down. I'll manipulate two, substitute two into one. This will give me... All right, and now using three and this new equation solve for the unknowns. All right, so I get AY is 26.79. Go back and I plug it into any of my equations and I'll get that BY is 35.62 kilonewtons. And if I substitute those back into one of my equilibrium equations, I will get that CY is negative 2.41 kilonewtons. Hey, and these are my support reactions. And if I take all these values and I go all the way back, if I come back and I plug in for AY, I get a value for C1. If I have a value for C1, and I know that C2 is zero, and I know Cy, 
I know B Y A Y, then I have an equation for the display shape of the entire beam. And because I know all the support reactions, shoot, I've even got an equation for the slope. I've got an equation for the moment function. I've got an equation for the shear function, all from doing my analysis. All right, hopefully this was useful. Take it easy. Structure free.